Hello there! And as I promised, that's Bodhidharma. He's the founder of Zen Buddhism and Shaolin Kung Fu. Now, as you'll notice, he's carrying a shovel. And uh, considering the fact that he came from India and he was all by himself, he had to deal with bandits and maybe even tigers. Now, I've actually uh, found out that he came up. I, I've been studying him over the years, and so I've come up with a lot of interesting and new information about who he is and everything. Um, I'm just going to presume you can see me, okay? <laughs> but here I am. This show isn't about me today. I'm going to show you about my past masters. And uh, anyway, Bodhidharma came from India, and uh, he ended up going to the Shaolin Temple. Now, I've written a book on that called The History of Zen from A to Z, which I give kind of a funny story about that. Hope Maybe fiction, maybe true, uh, who knows. But uh, actually, it's about, anyway, uh, check out my book, History of Zen from A to Z. But anyway, Bodhidharma came to the Shaolin Temple and uh, thought it was a cool place. And then he went and visited the, uh, um, the actual emperor, supposedly. These are all legends, and unfortunately, we don't have any real written documentation of this. So it's hard to say what the truth is, but the legend I'm going to pass on to you is this. Um, is that Bodhidharma, he walks all the way over here from India, and he sees the Shaolin Temple, and he goes, oh, this is a nice place, and he goes and meets the emperor, and the emperor says, hey, Bodhidharma, look, I've been creating all kinds of Bodhi, uh, Buddhist temples. I'm going to have a really nice place in heaven. And uh, Bodhidharma looked at him and said, well, that's nice of you to build all those temples, but I ain't going to guarantee you a better place in heaven. He, well, he could never have been a Catholic. <laughs> That's why uh, uh, Martin Luther created the Lutheran religion, because they were selling places in heaven. But anyway, um, the emperor didn't like that answer, and so he said, I think I better get out of here while well, I've still got a head on my shoulders. And he went back to the Shaolin Temple. Now, unfortunately, he didn't get along with the monks there. And um, he... Uh, well, let's put it this way. That's why he lived in a cave. They didn't even give him a place inside the temple. He, he, I mean, you'd think they kind of maybe revere him coming from India. and kind of, They consider him to be the 28th patriarch. Uh, but I don't know that that's entirely true either. But he, he was about the 28th generation since the original uh, Buddha. So he came over from India. And uh, anyway, so there you are. Now, the, the Buddhism that he created was more like a hippie version, which we call the Zen Buddhism. And he taught Kalari Payatu, remember that martial art. So he probably could use that shovel very well to, um, you know, basically take care of himself. And But anyway, the monks didn't uh, give him much prestige. And he was so unaccepted and disillusioned that he didn't even make any friends. And so the story of the first monk, his first disciple, is a very interesting story. And uh, he kind of tricked Bodhidharma into talking him. Otherwise, he would have just died and, and been a solitary monk who wrote a couple of books, though, the Bone Marrow Washing Classic and another one. At least two books, which were burned, unfortunately, with the temple, so we don't have those. But anyway, he's the founder of Zen Buddhism and Shaolin Kung Fu, and I'll tell you more about him later. And when we, oh, you'll notice that his uh, shovel only has a shovel. It wasn't until later when we became real good at Kung Fu, here's the shovel, that on the other end of it, we created this, this sickle. Now what happens is when you hold this sickle up and somebody drives by on a horse and they're swinging a sword at you, if you can avoid the sword and uh, catch him in the neck with that uh, sickle, well, <laughs> you, you got that headless horseman concept going. So, and plus being balanced, it's, one, it's my favorite weapon. Now this is considered to be a, um, especially in the southern styles of Kung Fu, this is the Guan Dao, named after General Guan. And this is a lightweight version of it. The original one is supposed to be like 15 pounds. And all he would do is basically hang, you know, hold it across his chest, angled down maybe at like a 45 degree angle, and just drive through the troops and lop off people's heads, you know? And, uh, you know, <laughs> so this is a, a, a kind of a, yeah, but you, you want it heavy. It's got a weight on the other end of it, so it's kind of balanced a little bit. But most of the weight is on that big, heavy end on it. So I've never been a big fan of it. In fact, when one of my Kung Fu masters. In fact, this guy right up here. Um, these are a couple of my masters up here. Uh, this is the guy on the right there is Ru Jing Shi or Steve Ba. And he was actually a disciple of um, uh, the guy in Chinatown. Uh, what's that? Oh, gosh, I should have prepared for this better. <laughs> 
Uh, but anyway, he was he's very famous in the southern styles of Kung Fu, and he was a black belt from there. But he wanted to learn the northern styles, and so when he came over to our school, he was already a black belt in Kung Fu, but then he learned our system from this guy. And that's Dr. Cam Yuan, who's famous from the TV series, the Kung Fu TV series, and that's me over here. So that's uh, Ru Jing Shi. He was also my Taoist mentor, and he's a Xing Yi back black belt also. And then Dr. Cam Yuan, who learned Praying Mantis, so I got my Praying Mantis from him, and he learned his Shaolin Kung Fu from Wong Jack Man. So when I went up to study under Wong Jack Man, I became his school brother. So, but he's still my older brother, at least. <laughs> he's my master from Thai Manus Federation, and then me. And then this guy right here is the first guy to learn Shaolin Kung Fu who was not a monk. He's a, that's a, a Kui Chung or Guru Zhang, depending on your dialect. And you can see pictures of him, this skinny guy without a shirt on. And he's breaking a big, huge stack of bricks with one hand. And the bricks are all cracked down the middle and his hands on the top of them. That's him. And he's the Shaolin guy. And then he supposedly, I guess he taught Wong Jack Man. And then Wong Jack Man taught me. And uh, Wong Jack Man taught him. But uh, he's my great grandpa. So we look at the, this is a family sense. So if he is my dad and school brother, and also, you know, uh, if, if he would have learned directly from, well, actually, because Wong Jack Man did learn supposedly directly from him, that makes him my grandpa. Wong Jack Man's my, gra my dad, and then this guy's my Kung Fu grandpa. Now, this is another one of my grandpas. This guy taught Cam Yuan directly, the guy in the middle, who's famous, by the way, from, he's famous for teaching um, David Carradine and being a technical advisor on the Kung Fu TV show. Okay, now this guy over here was the bodyguard of the South Vietnamese president for the entire Vietnam War, the entire war, as far as I know, for, I don't know, over a decade or 20 years or some number of years. And he was the personal bodyguard and trained all the guards of the um, uh, South Vietnamese president, and they kept him alive. So that was a big achievement, considering all the people trying to assassinate him. Uh, but he's supposed to be a, such a cool guy. He was quite revered. I got a bunch of stories I can tell you about him. Um, uh, uh, in fact, I'll show you an honorary uh, picture of him in just a minute. Uh, temp and here's one of my certificates. This is actually my Shaolin Temple certificate, which includes references to, you know, Xing, uh, Xing Yi, which I did not, do not actually know. And, um, and they mentioned the different praying mantis I'm trained in and everything like that and the Taoism, uh, but that's our Shaolin certificate. Here's an actual ya, uh, um, Tai Chi flag. The left one is character is Tai, the middle one's Chi, and then the right one is Shuang, which means boxing style. So that's supreme, ultimate power, boxing style, okay? And a couple of my sashes. The red one is the one I use for Tai Chi Youth, which has three stripes on it. And then my black one, which is Shaolin Chi Mantis, which has seven stripes on it, because I created that Seven, that's how long my curriculum is. Okay, a whole bunch of weapons here. We can come back and look at those in a minute. Um, oh, got to mention this guy up here. This is Buddha, Dad, the original Buddha. Um, and so that's a really cool picture of him. This was given to me as a gift from the uh, Tibetan monks. When they used to visit Salt Lake City um, every year or so, uh, they would always look me up and say, hey, come hang out with us. So I'd go party with the monks. <laughs> and they gave me that. They gave me a, a, a sash, too, of some sort. Um, or a scar a sash or scarf. I never really used it. Okay, here's my, my, my kind of like diploma wall over here. So this one right here is uh, my graduate degree from UCLA Film School. Here's me, my graduation from, um, what's that, junior high? <laughs> and then my, my being a confirmed Catholic. This is to show that I'm, I'm a genuine Catholic graduate here. Um, I took some Scientology courses. I got a couple of graduates from them. Here's my high school diploma, way down here from Newfoundland. Because remember, I was kicked out of, the, uh, of America. They didn't appreciate the fact that I was an LSD enthusiast. So they thought I'd be better off if I wasn't part of this country. Now, that guy I told you who was the protector of the um, uh, South Vietnamese president, this is his uh, um, a school or system that was named after him. The Tai Chi praying mantis system existed, but he was so famous and they wanted to repopularize it. So they kind of named it after him. And this is the United States. Chiu Chuk Kai is his name. In fact, that picture was made by one of my students from Thai Manus Federation, um, GD French. And then here's the TV show. And I, I forgot this picture because the guy on the right is actually Cam Ewan. That's him, my instructor. And then the other guy was just an actor, but he was a good actor. Um, 
I just like this picture, um, you know. <laughs> and this is what it looked like when, when Jet Li went to the Shaolin Temple and actually made the very first um, Kung Fu, Shaolin Kung Fu movie. He said there was just a few monks hanging around and none of them knew Kung Fu. So this guy was like the very last monk or abbot of the temple before the Chinese government said, hey, we're gonna turn this place into a theme park. Uh, so I consider him to be the kind of like the last real Buddhist to be in the temple. <laughs> and then everybody after that was hired there uh, was, as a job. And now this guy, um, this is given to me by the Chinese Association, which says kind of like um, very um, uh, powerful, unique, uh, advanced hand and foot. Just kind of a, a way to say, wow, what a great Kung Fu master. And it's got my name in Chinese up here. That top character is Jen and then Shen, and then Long. So that's they actually took some time and made that nice and they put my Chinese name there. And then the, the uh, thing there. Um, oh, this thing, oh, here's, a, here's an award from uh, actually graduating uh, one of the degrees of, of Freemasonry. I got that. This is my instructor um, sash for um, Buddha Kung Fu, which is actually, if I avoid getting that in the cat box, it's just a white sash and then you add 10 stripes to it. There's no colors. Now, I taught you how to join a class, be in one of my classes. Well, when I taught at the park, what I would do is I would hang three different things on the tree. So I would hang this in the center, and this represented the Buddhism, which is kind of the center part of all Shaolin Kung Fu, because it took place at a Buddhist temple. And then I would hang on the side of it um, that Tai Chi Chuan flag I showed you a second ago. And then uh, another um, thing that I got in Chinatown, which was a really cool uh, tapestry scroll of a, of a dragon and a tiger, which kind of represented Shaolin Kung Fu. Uh, now these things are cool. I got a bunch of these, uh, these uh, monk staffs. Oh, this is from being a pipe carrier of the Lakota Sioux. That's my pipe, my medicine pipe, uh, whatever you want to call it in there. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah, <laughs> got a lot to say about that actually, but let's we'll leave it at that for now. Um, but yeah, I'm a pipe carrier of the Lakota Sioux. Now this up here is the, um, I was talking about this thing. This is a lantern. And those chains, you'd put like a little, uh, you know, um, like a cat bowl <laughs> attached to those things, put some oil in it with a wick, and then you'd walk around with a lantern. And then you could cover it with some cloth, and it would kind of glow and provide a more even light, and hopefully not catch on fire. And then up here is one of my stabs, which is actually enshrined in one of my sashes. In fact, is this the original? Yeah, this is the actually I recognize it. This sash is the first sash that I got and the only sash I got when I joined Time Mantis. And because my instructor didn't have a belt ranking system, my first sash was a black sash. <laughs> so when I actually joined as a novice, I'd come from another Kung Fu school, but that had nothing to do with it. They just, you know, as my master said, a sash is just to hold your pants up. I had to create the uh, belt ranking system and the colored sashes, which is why they're all different in all my schools, because China has Traditionally, no colored belt ranking system. That's a Japanese thing. Um, these are uh, rope darts, which are like a 15 foot uh, rope if it's untangled there. Now this one has a meteor hammer on the end of it, which is really cool. Uh, this is more, which kind of, I, I, well, I, I like them both, but this thing's a little heavier than this one over here, which is the traditional rope dart, which, um, uh, which you can use as more like a project projectile and you can kind of aim it like a bullet more Whereas the other one's more of a clubbing, but you can aim the other one, too uh, But that uh, that's about 15 to 18 feet depending on how big you are um, This is an honor. This is an honorary thing was given to me at some uh, event that I did because I used to do a lot of Tai Chi events And I think it means wealth and prosperity. I should probably know that I think it's basically the same as this one here and then uh, the other one uh, of course is for health and happiness, I think uh, my Chinese is terrible. I got up to the fifth grade in about 1994, and I haven't had any Chinese training or language since then. So my la my Chinese language is really... <laughs> I can't, I'd rather not talk about that. Okay, so where were we? Okay, so I showed you most of my stuff here. I could go through the weapons, but since I'm noticing on the time here, it's already 14 minutes, I better cut it because that means that uh, TikTok is only going to show the first 10 minutes of this. So I kind of blew it. I was supposed to try to make this TikTok oriented. So anyway, um, I'll give you the rest of this stuff later. Let's get out of here, okay? So, uh, hey, <laughs> see you later.